So you said you're a fan of Trigun. How was it like getting the job to readapt Trigun? So I was actually day? never expecting to work on Trigun. So it was actually, um, I came in later into the project. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my friend, my partner and friend, producer Waki was the one who start, founded, founded the project. Right. And started. But first when I opened the book, I mean, I was like everyone else. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't touch a classic, <laughs> please. Yeah, I, there must've been some kind of trepidation there where you hear like you're re-adapting re it. Like I, the anime is pretty good. Like, yeah. Was kind of like a bit of like, I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> I mean, when I, I mean, the more information I knew about the entire mm. picture, um, mm -hmm. I was more comfortable with it. Right, right, mm, yeah. Right, right. I mean, as a, um, as a first um, project that how it started was that it was the producers went Naito, the original creator of Tri Trigun himself, mm. and saying that we want to make Trigun. Yeah. But Naito was like, well, I would love you guys to expand on it, not yeah. adapt it again. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because it's already been adapted. Yeah. 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 What was like the philosophy when it came to readapting? A, a show that a lot of people held dear to their hearts uh, because there must have been a lot of pressure on you guys to get this right. I mean, we're all from, I mean, even the director himself, we have kind of link, link, sorry, link lineage to Trigun. Oh, ah, okay, mm. okay. So right. the um, director's master was the Trigun's director. Oh, the original Trigun. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. okay, okay, okay. So we, ha we all of us have very special feelings to the 98 Trigun. Yeah. It's like, I will overpass you, master. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> yes, as an ambition, we definitely had that. Oh yeah, yeah. for but sure. As a work, we never intentioned to re rewrite everyone's precious memories, mm. yeah, yeah, but yeah. to be work along with it. So. Oh, I mean, it was very different from the original as well in a lot of aspects, I think. Yeah. So I think it was, it was really good. It was very different, but I, I, you know, I feel like it was in a good way um, because I've seen enough remakes that just try to redo everything mm. like step by step in like modern animation. And I really appreciated that you guys went a completely different direction while I think keeping the core of Trigon. Yeah, there. you I, kept I the vibe. You, I for think sure. anime has had a bit more success with remakes in general mm. than uh, other mediums. <laughs> uh, I mean like Hunter Hunter and mm. Full Metal Alchemist. But I mean, when you compare it to like how re then recently they announced that they're remaking Moana in live action. Oh yeah. Do you, do you, ever, do you ever think, man, I. As as a producer or a creator, is there ever a concern where you're like, are we, is there ever going to be too many remakes, or are we, are we going to be <laughs> making too many of these? Like, mm. I, I always just wonder about that when you make when you're working on a remake. You're like, are we? Is this a good idea? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I feel I feel anime doesn't have as much of a problem that like Hollywood remakes have been going through, especially like Disney remakes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. just because I think we've <laughs> learned from the past that you know. Uh, Sometimes the remakes aren't really worth it. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I feel like the most successful remakes are the ones where, at least in the anime world, are the ones where it took the original vibe mm -hmm. and the concept and just gave us something completely different, yeah. right? Like yeah. the reason why like the Fruits Basket remake was so mm -hmm. successful is because it did exactly that. It took kind of an incomplete story from the anime and just kind of took all of the parts that were wrong with it and just improved upon That's it without nice. changing the vibe. And it ended up being an amazing remake. I mean, so. I feel like Full Metal Brother, Full Metal Brother? Full Metal Brotherhood? <laughs> full Metal. <laughs> full Metal Alchemist. I've watched Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> full Metal Brother I've seen Alchemist. Full Metal Brotherhood. <laughs> full Metal Brother <laughs> Alchemist. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like after that, just like there was a whole wave of just like- well, Oh, Hunter, Hunter was like, the remake is so good. Oh yeah. yeah. Jo JoJo's technically a remake. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so, yeah. And a remake. Okay, I, I want to know, with, without obviously spoiling anything that you're working on now, what goes into the decision making of what gets a season two and what doesn't oh. get a season two. As an anime producer, you probably have the most uh, perspective about this. I mean, we get a lot of requests to make season two, of course. Yeah. But I mean, first we have to give in the choice to make season two. Okay. I mean, we have clients. Yeah. So is the client gonna give us a choice to make season two? Right, right, I mean, right. we, I mean, so far, if we're, once we're given a choice, we always said yes so far. Yeah. Okay. But other projects um, we haven't done is that we don't have the choice to say it yet. Right. I mean, maybe one day it'll come by, but. Yeah, because it's, it's always so weird as an anime viewer, you see some of the things that are on like their fifth season and then some fan favorite yeah, shows never go shows. past like season one. And I'm like, this this makes no sense to me. How AKA Data Live and No Game No Life. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that just because the framework of how anime gets made is just so complex with a lot of parties that get a say and if it does or doesn't happen, is that? 
the reason why? I mean, the the business model is a very um, similar way, but the people involved are all different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to say what's happening. I mean, it could be the original creator. It could be how the business uh, the producers are. Right. Or it could be the studio, or there's uh, complete other reasons. So, so uh, the anime studio only gets involved after everything else has already been approved, or does Studio Orange get to you know be at the seat when sh shows are being pitched for like not even like a season two, but just to be made in the yeah, first like? Do place. you guys get to like negotiate, being like, we personally really want to see a season two of this? What do you think, kind of mm -hmm. thing? Um, it depends on pro project to project. Um, mm -hmm. Orange because we're CG based. We mm -hmm. have a lot of limitations. So like shows involves hundred characters. We can't do it because that means equals a lot of budget. Right, I mean, right, right. The business model currently doesn't support that kind of budget. So there's no right. way we could get that budget. <clears throat> so what, why does increasing the characters increase the budget? So to make one character it involves making a CG model, yeah. which costs a lot of money. So ah. making hundreds of that is equals times that. Mm. Oh, oh, okay. That's and that's why you end up with the CG crowds where all the characters just are the same model <laughs> because it's a lot cheaper, right? And huh. same movement as well. Yeah, same yeah, movement. Yeah, yeah, same yeah exactly. Movement as well. but, then, but by that logic, when we see some 3D and anime uh, in 2D anime, surely it would be more expensive than to produce a model and then animate that model just for like one scene in anime? Or is there some kind of cost cutting method that makes more sense for that? So in our case, um, I can't speak for other right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Orange's case, that's why we use still hand-drawn characters as well. So in uh, Beastars, if you notice, um, there's a lot of hand-drawn characters. Yeah, I did, yeah, I yeah. Notice, yeah. One scene only characters. <laughs> right. Okay. Huh. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, how much do you put into like, let's say, you, let's say you're given a series, right? and you still want to like hand draw some scenes, how do you choose which scenes you want to like hand draw versus which scenes you want to like keep completely in 3D? It's totally depends on what can we do in 3D. Right. So if the 3D is going to explode into three thousand pieces, um, then in that case, we, our VFX team is very excellent. So they could, they'll could say they could do it. Okay. Mm. But if it's going to, let's say, um, split into 100 characters, right. then our animation team says that we can't do that. Oh, okay, mm. okay. Huh. So how big is your team in terms of like your, let's say 2D animation kind of like, like specialty? Uh, we currently have about uh, over hundred employees. Ah. So every year wow. we have about um, 20 employees trying to extend the studio. Right. But we think that's the limit of how we could train people. Right. Okay, okay. Um, and I guess like you, I, I guess I'd like to learn, know more about, you know, you you have your own like, journey into the anime industry, but if say someone's watching this right now and they were interested it, into getting into the anime industry, maybe as like a producer or any other kind of role, what is like, now that you've been here for like 10, 10 odd years, what's your like advice to people who actually want to get into the animation industry? Mm. It, yeah, it totally depends what you want to do in this industry. If you want to be an animator, then just start drawing and then if you haven't drawn, start drawing, just apply mm. to any studio. I mean, right. We have a lot of shortages in this industry. So I don't say, um, I can't say speak for other studios. So um, I can't say for their working condition, but I mean, fi please find a good working condition partner to work mm. with. Mm. Okay. Okay.